Alrighty, next up we have Eniash Brodsky. Uh, Eniash works with me in the accounting department, and the most notable thing I can tell you is that he's probably as quiet and as cute as I am. We are notoriously <laughs> silent where we sit with our neighbors. So, Eniash was born in Poland, and he enjoys writing and blogging about fantasy and sci-fi in his spare time. And he's getting married next year. Eniash will be giving his icebreaker speech. myself, tell you all a little bit about me. My name is Emiash Brodsky, and I used to be an alcoholic. Um, my reason was the standard uh, problem that life is empty and painful, and drinking made it happy and fun. When I was a teen, I never got to drink at all, uh, because I was too busy with academics. I spent all my time studying, working on school things, and all my friends were likewise very geeky and nerdy, and so I never had any peer pressure to drink at all. Uh, when I got out of high school, I very quickly married to someone who became a fundamentalist in just a few months, and so there was no alcohol allowed in my adult life either, until I managed to escape that marriage. And once I did that, I was suddenly free to explore alcohol, and I found that it was the greatest thing ever invented. <laughs> it made life fun and happy, and I could actually get to sleep without agonizing in bed for 90 minutes. It was easily available and pretty cheap, and all I had to do was drink it. It was like a magical elixir. I became an alcoholic almost overnight. Um, Normally in this part, I tell you my rock bottom story and what brought me out, <laughs> but I don't have a rock bottom story, unlike most alcoholism stories. I started doing this a little after I joined INCO, maybe six to eight months after I started here, and I had some embarrassing moments and some blackouts. <laughs> But for the most part, I was a functional alcoholic for three years. None of my bosses ever complained about my work here. I only lost one friend. Um, I made a whole bunch of new friends. And I had a good time. I paid all my bills on time. I never got an accident or got any DUIs. And I admit I was really lucky in some aspects about that. I don't think I should be proud that I was a functional alcoholic. <laughs> but some small part of me is still kind of proud about that, which is also embarrassing. Unfortunately, like any relationship, the happiness did not last forever. I don't know if I just overwhelmed and burned out those receptors in my brain, but after several years of doing this, drinking at my peak almost a fifth of vodka a night, I no longer felt happy when I drank. I would still get drunk, I would get tipsy and impaired and all those things, but it no longer came with that sense of peace and joy and fun. And I acknowledge that I am very lucky that that happened, because if that hadn't happened, I might still be drinking today. Um, with the main reason to drink removed, I no longer had the offsetting good part to um, offset the health problems and the lost evenings and the other impairment. I needed something different to be happy because life was starting to hurt again. I had tried pot in the past and I really didn't like the high that it gives you. And I was not willing to try any harder drugs because I know too many horror stories. And as I was thinking, I remembered a time about one year ago where some friends invited me out and they all went biking and they had a spare bike that they loaned me. And I was like, oh, what the hell, I might as well. I wasn't one for exercise at the time. If you recall, I was quite a bit heavier then. But uh, I went riding with them, and it was amazing. The endorphins it released invoked that same level of happiness. I wanted to sing and dance and jump around just from this feeling coursing through me. And I didn't keep up with it because at that point, the alcohol was still working, and it was much easier just to drink and be happy. 
But now thinking back, what I could do to replace the alcohol, I thought, let's try the exercise. That seemed to work then. This was also at a point where I had just had sleep apnea surgery, where they take out a large chunk of the back of your throat. And as a result, you can't eat any solid foods for about two weeks. And during that two week period, I lost about 20 pounds. And I thought, I should also exercise to keep this weight off because this is great. I like feeling lighter and more energetic. And uh, it was a quality of life improvement. So exercise will help out with that too. And I resolved to start working out. As it turned out, the exercise did change my life, but not in the way that I thought. Um, it wasn't a happiness drug like alcohol was. It, instead, having a goal and working towards it was very fulfilling. I found that happiness is overrated. We are constantly pushed being happy, that it's something we should pursue. It's one of our fundamental goals. But happiness, like any other drug, fades and then leaves you empty when it's gone. And to have a goal and work towards it really made life worth living. Being productive in pursuit of something was better than being happy. So now I have goals. And to pursue those goals, I must be better than I am. I need to be a stronger and more persuasive speaker. I want to improve my didactic skills. I can't show nervousness. I have to be an interesting conversationalist. And I heard that Toastmasters is a great place to learn these skills. So, let's all work together to level up and gain these powers. Here at Toastmasters. Thank you.